Fire, Water, and Grass. The first choice that any player is going to make in any Pokemon game besides what version to pick. Your starter Pokemon is typically going to be one of the Pokemon you'll bond the most with over your journey, and they typically tend to be fan favorites for this reason. Despite being such fan favorites though, we rarely actually see most starters be viable in VGC. Okay, get out of here you two, this video is not about either of you. While some gimmicks over the years that have been added to the game such as Megas and Gigantamax have helped a little bit with the starter issue, overall they tend to fall to power creep for the most part. But just why is that? Today, I want to solve not only why starters typically end up falling to power creep, but what we can do about it to make sure that they stay meta relevant without completely breaking the game. So first, let's establish what all starter Pokemon have in common in order to get a better understanding of where we can look to improve. All starter Pokemon have two abilities, with the first being their hidden ability and the second one being one of Overgrow if you're a grass starter, Blaze for fire starters, and Torrent for water starters. Each starter Pokemon also has roughly a base stat total of 530, though this exact number depends on the starter. This proves to actually be really strong for a base stat total among fully evolved Pokemon, especially when you compare it to a lot of other meta relevant picks like Amoongus, which only has a base stat total of 464. If Amoongus can be one of the best Pokemon of all time in VGC with only 464 base stat total though, then how come our starters can't? One of the biggest reasons the starter Pokemon are held back is mostly due to how the stats are distributed. Now that might seem a bit hypocritical since I just talked about how good a base stat total of 530 is, but when you break down the individual stats, you're going to start to realize a trend. Most starters are just not that optimized. The best way to illustrate this point is going to be to go over Primarina, which is the best starter Pokemon in my opinion that isn't consistently relevant in the metagame. Primarina is the water starter from the Alola region, and when you evolve it from Poplio, you'll gain a secondary typing of Fairy, as well as plenty of other really good coverage options. Liquid Voice is a pretty cool ability too, though I won't act like it couldn't have been better. <coughs> Make it water type picks like. Liquid Voice aside, Primarina arguably is one of the most viable starter Pokemon if we don't consider either generational gimmicks or Incineroar and Rillaboom, though you typically still don't really see a lot of results from Primarina. Why is that? Primarina actually is a pretty good stat line. With 126 in its special offense, you can deal a lot of damage to opponents with this, and you have fairly respectable bulk too with 80 HP, 74 defense, and 116 special defense. You can use this as a pretty good sweeper in Trick Room, though I won't act like there aren't better options considering base 60 isn't the best for a Trick Room speed tier, especially when you're competing with Pokemon like Iron Hands and Torkoal, which are two of the better Trick Room options to begin with, and they both completely underpace you and have ways to revenge, it starts to become clear why Primarin isn't really used for this role. What about as a bulky attacker? This is where we need to look at one of the other water type Pokemon that Alola gave us that actually has the same typing as Primarina and is ultimately just better suited for the metagame, being none other than Tapu Fini. Tapu Fini is also a water and fairy type Pokemon that the Alola region provided with a little bit better defensive stats with 78 HP, 115 defense, and 130 special defense. Tapu Fini also has the ability Misty Surge, which does a much better job at playing into the strengths of a generally bulky Pokemon making sure that it sets Misty Terrain, which completely stops any and all status from you and your partner, as well as the whole field in general. While typically you are going to use Tapu Fini as more of a haze Pokemon to try and stop opponents, that doesn't mean that Tapu Fini can't be used for more offensive roles, since we have seen options like Choice Scarf and even Calm Mindsets with Store Power that have completely dominated in previous VGC formats. Because of this, there's honestly no real reason to use Primarina, because Tapu Fini just can do all of its roles, but significantly better in most cases. Most starters don't have the luxuries that Primarina has, and they have a lot more areas where they would need improvements to become actually relevant Pokemon instead of being absolutely mediocre. For example, we actually saw one of the biggest buffs in history to a starter, with Torterra gaining not only Shell Smash, but also Headlong Rush in this generation. And it's still not enough, even when you factor in that Terra can get rid of its terrible defensive typing, while still allowing it to take advantage of the really strong offensive benefits that a grass and ground stab combination would provide. Now, Torterra has a kit that in theory should have made it fairly relevant. With a grass and ground stab, you hit most relevant Pokemon in the tier. With Shell Smash at plus two speed, you now outpace every relevant speed tier besides booster energy threats. And with the speed at base 58, you can underpace a lot of still relevant Trick Room Pokemon such as Sylveon, while not necessarily outpacing the really big ones, but still resisting their stabs anyway. Yet Torterra still cannot find a place in this format. I think it just goes to show that a lot of starters typically are just not desired in VGC due to the fact that there are a lot better Pokemon, which means that we probably need to look elsewhere outside of just stats and move pools in order to make them relevant. We do have a couple areas that we can look to in order to improve the starter Pokemon. First though, we do need to establish that the buff that we give to the starters should generally improve a majority of the starters in terms of viability, 
since we can't really look to something like stats since that gets a lot more specific based on what each Pokemon needs and we don't need to really optimize 30 different Pokemon. So I think the best area to improve all the starter Pokemon generally speaking is going to be taking a look at these starter exclusive abilities. Overgrow, Torrent, and Blaze because this is a generally really easy place to upgrade the starters since most Pokemon don't even touch these abilities anyway. The only noteworthy example I can actually think of of a relevant meta pick actually choosing to use these abilities instead of being forced to would be Miascarada, which preferred it over Protean since you could only activate the ability one time, and Miascarada's dark and grass typing offered a lot of benefits such as an immunity to prankster Pokemon, as well as an immunity to Rage Powder and Spore, which was really important in Series 1 VGC. Now there's two ideas I have for fixing these abilities, with the first honestly being a pretty generic take of just making these new versions of Pixelate. Now this would definitely be the more modern way to improve these abilities, since this sort of boost didn't exactly exist until Generation 6, but I think it's a great idea since none of these typings have an exact clone of Pixelate right now in the format. Instead of just boosting your damage when you're at below one third of your health, this would now give you a consistent way to boost your damage entirely and make the starter Pokemon actually fairly good picks. While our best normal type moves to take advantage of these abilities would be options like Return and Frustration for most starters, these moves no longer exist. So I think this would actually give a little bit more of a cause to decide if these abilities were truly what you wanted to run on the team. For example, options like Infernape and Swampert could maybe take advantage of these with a move like Body Slam, which could act as a form of speed control while being a really high base power stab option for them. Meanwhile, Pokemon like Primarina and Delphox could look at a stab Hyper Voice or Hyper Beam in their current movesets in order to deal some mass damage with a really good stab option that could offer them a lot of benefits for wall breaking. Oh, speaking of Primarina, this is where this buff gets a little bit clunky because while Liquid Voice has a little bit of uniqueness, such as making sure that Perish Song is now a stab option, at the same time, it's so similar that I think Primarina would just need a new ability. Now to look into where I came up with this next idea, we're gonna have to go all the way back to Generation 2. In Generation 2, Pokemon gave us a new move, Reversal, which I think is gonna be a great way to actually look into how we should be buffing these abilities. The games have a built-in system for buffing the damage of Reversal based on how little health you have, so this isn't exactly going to be a new mechanic for the games to hit. And instead, it would take advantage of an already decent concept for abilities by buffing the starter Pokemon's damage based on how little health they have, and making it actually viable. Now I think that the best way to go about this would be looking at the item Metronome, because Metronome actually peaks at two times damage if you use a move in succession, and I think we could use a similar damage output without it being too broken if we just scaled it based on how much health you had. Because of this, I'm going to implement the idea that for all of the starter abilities, when we make it go by every 20%, starting at 90%, where you gain a 1.2 times damage boost. For example, if you're at 90% health, you'll have 1.2 times increase to your stabs. However, if you're at 50%, you're gonna go to 1.6 times damage, and so on all the way down to 10% and below, which will have a two times stab boost for all of your primary typing moves. These abilities would require to keep your starter alive at as low health as possible to be at their maximum potential, but it would give actual use to the starter Pokemon outside of just needing their hidden abilities to be viable. You could definitely take advantage of a partner like Ndidi that could use Follow Me to draw on these attacks in order to keep your Pokemon alive at as low health as possible to fire off strong fire, water, or grass boosted moves with two times damage. However, since there's no single redirection option that actually even has access to the move Wide Guard, you could very consistently beat these Pokemon by just firing off a move like Rock Slide or Earthquake in order to take out the opponent while they're at their low health, making this still counterable but definitely a nice much needed buff for most starter Pokemon. Also, this buff wouldn't exactly break Rillaboom or Incineroar because they typically would prefer their hidden abilities anyway because of the fact that they offer so much team support and these Pokemon typically don't pursue dealing damage as wall breakers anyway. So these are my ideas for how to buff the starter Pokemon and I think they translate really well to the doubles format. But if you have any ideas yourselves that would work for the whole starter pool, let me know down below. I'd love to read your guys' ideas in the comments. Also, make sure to consider subscribing and leaving a like on today's video as it helps out a lot. And if you enjoy the content, make sure you check out Kurt, whose link will be in the annotation right above. Kurt makes phenomenal content and is going to be coming back to the scene very soon, and I would much appreciate it if you guys could check him out. With that said, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Until then, peace out guys.